I regret that I can't visit the site due to regional restriction on COVID-19, but I really appreciate the chair and organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to make this presentation here today. Here is my COI. And today's agenda. First three, I will talk about target imaging study in PD and related disorders. After that, I will also discuss the issues and current situation of developing alpha sign grain pad. Finally, I will mention the future direction. So, I'd like to look back the history of development of tablet ligands. In 1990s, there are several attempts to track tau pathologies in vivo, and fluorating labeled FTDNP uh, was developed as a tablet ligand. However, this ligand show uh, affinity to a better pathology as well as tau pathology. Furthermore, the affinity of this ligand both for a better and tau pathology are very low. So nowadays, uh, this ligand is no longer regarded as a beta or a tau beta ligand. Around 2013, uh, several practical tablet ligands uh, have been developed, including carbon-11 labeled PBB3 from our institute NIRS, fluor-18 labeled AB4051, also known as fluor tau CPA or T807 from Siemens and Nowadays, uh, Eli Lilly has a patent of this ligand, and fluorating label THK compound series, including THK 5C51 from Tohoku University. And uh, these uh, practical target ligands uh, strongly promoted the clinical target study uh, in this field. However, uh, there are several drawbacks about uh, this uh, first-generation target ligand. So, nowadays, uh, there are uh, several uh, attempts to develop a new generation or second-generation target ligand. Uh, including uh, fluor 18 label PMPBB3 of our institute, or kind of like that. Fluor tau CPA has already been approved by FDA as target agent for Alzheimer's disease. What does it mean for Alzheimer's disease? Normal tau protein is encoded on chromosome 17. There are a total of six isoforms of tau protein, which can be divided into two groups based on the number of repetitive sequences they contain, 4-lip tau and 3-lip tau. AD and aging-related tau changes, so-called part, contain all six isoforms. In contrast, Tau pathologies observed in PSP and CBD only have 4B tau, and tau pathologies of Pick's disease just have 3B tau. The molecular species constituting tau regions and the structure of tau fibrils vary from disease to disease. Recent cryo-electron microscopy studies have revealed that the 3D structure of diverse tau opacity is different. The pathology of tau in AD shows a C-shaped curve. On the other hand, the pathology of tau in Pick's disease shows a J-shaped curve. In addition, 4B tau opacity 
such as PSP and CBD show a different 3D structure from AD and PIC. Moreover, PSP and CBD also have different 3D structures. This difference in the conformation of tau regions may also affect the binding affinity of tau bet ligands. In other words, a ligand that binds to AD may not necessarily bind to other tau opposites as well. This slide shows properties of tau bet ligands. Top 3 ligands are first generation tablet ligands, and the rest ones are second generation or next generation tablet ligands. Second generation ones show wider dynamic range compared with first generation tablet ligands. Each tablet ligand can bind to the pathology observed in Alzheimer's disease patients. However, Little tau bet ligand can bind to tau pathology observed in 3 bit or 4 bit tau opacity, such as peak disease, PSP, and CBD. Furthermore, only carbon 11 labeled PBB3 and fluoro 18 labeled PMPBB3 can bind to tau pathology observed in tau transgenic mouse model. Some tau bet ligands show non-specific binding. For example, fluor 18 label THK5351 show cross react to Mao B. Mao B abundantly exists in activated astroglia. Astroglial activation occurs associated with neurodegeneration. So it's difficult for us to discriminate binding to astroglia and uh, binding to tau pathology using this ligand. This slide shows the rep representative image of tau pet imaging with PMPBB3. Even in healthy subjects, off-target binding in colloid plexus is observed in some cases, but the parenchymal accumulation is very low. In Alzheimer's disease, high accumulation is observed in a wide area of the cerebral cortex, mainly in the medial and lateral temporal lobes. In PSP and CBD, a high accumulation was observed in the brain stem, STM, and striatum, and also in the cortex in advanced PSP and CBD. In PIX disease, we can see a high uptake in the inferior frontal temporal cortices. Here is a representative image of PMPBB3 PET in PSP Richardson syndrome. We can see a remarkable uptake of PMPBB3 around midbrain, STM, striatum, and some subcortical region. Interestingly, this region associates with brain atrophy. In light upper figure, we can see a nicely overlap between PMPBB3 uptake and brain atrophy also in the group analysis. Furthermore, PMPBB3 uptake around midbrain associated with severity of Parkinsonism measured by PSP writing scale. Similar to what has been reported in AD, the accumulation of tau bed in PSP becomes more extensive and more pronounced as the disease progresses. As a result, the extent and degree of accumulation reflects the disease stage and severity. By evaluating pet ligand accumulation, 
it was possible to discriminate PSP patients from healthy controls with the sensitivity and specificity of more than 95%. Notably, it's expected to be potentially useful for diagnosis at the level of a single case. Patients with cortic basal syndrome are known to have diverse background pathologies, which may be stratified as A and T double positive, A negative, T positive, and A and T double negative by combined amyloid and tau pet. In fact, we were also able to confirm that the rates of AD non-AD tauopathy and non-tauopathy estimated by combined amyloid PET and tau PET are comparable to those reported in pathological studies. Pathological evaluation by autopsy and biopsy also confirmed the characteristic tau pathology in hyperaccumulated areas on PET during the lifetime of CBD and PSP patients. This slide is a summary about images obtained from FTLD tau spectrum patient with estimated pathological backgrounds. Compared to CBD patients, the pathology in PSP patients shows subcortical predominancy. PSP Parkinsonism patients who show relatively mild motor dysfunction and slow disease progression and the distribution of the ligand is restricted compared to PSP Richardson syndrome. Within PSP spectrum patients, ligand uptake become more prominent along with disease severity. And CBS spectrum patients who showed cortical dysfunctions such as aphasia and behavior problems having remarkable uptake of the ligand around neocortex in addition with PSP-like subcortical regions. And CBS patients with slight motor dysfunction have little uptake around subcortical region and show neocortical dominant tau pathology. As for a peak disease patient known as 3 repeat tauopathy, 3 repeat tauopathy patients show different topological pattern from 4 repeat tauopathy like PSP CBD. Finally, I'd like to mention a few words about the expected role of neuropathological imaging in the future, especially in relation to the field of drug discovery. With the advent of amyloid PET, the diagnostic accuracy of subject for clinical trials has dramatically improved. In other words, it's now possible to exclude SNAP by using amyloid PET as a diagnostic biomarker. It's also now being used as a surrogate marker to determine the therapeutic evaluation of antibody drugs targeting amyloid beta and tau. In addition, since tau PET is an objective indicator of disease severity, biomarkers can now be used to assess disease severity and patients with pathologically appropriate disease severity can be incorporated as subjects. In fact, in a phase 2 study of donanemab, an antibody drug against amyloid beta, TAPET was used to exclude from the study not only the most severely ill patient who were expected to be less responsive to treatment, but also very mildly ill patient who were expected to progress little within the observation period of the study. 
This is a really interesting study design. Neuropathological imaging is expected to become an essential basic technology for the drug discovery process in future clinical trials. Next topic is alpha sign claim PET imaging. In vivo visualization of alpha sign claim aggregates is more challenging. First, the absolute concentration of alpha sign claim aggregates within the brain is thought to be 10 to 50 fold lower than that of A beta or tau regions. Therefore, alpha sign claim PET ligands must require very high affinity to target site. Second, a beta and tau pathologies in addition to alpha sign claim aggregates have similar cross beta seed structure. And alpha sign claim aggregates frequently coexist or co-localized with alpha sign claim aggregates complicating the development of selective alpha sign claim binding ligands. Moreover, the highest concentration of alpha sign claim inclusions can be found intracellularly. So alpha sign claim PET ligands had to be able to cross cell membrane as well as blood brain barrier. In vivo post-translational modifications exemplified by phosphorylation, truncation, acetylation, or nitration could result in a variety of substructures that might not be recognized by the PET ligands developed for the unmodified structure. Finally, there may be structural differences between in vivo and in vitro, which may result in difficulties in PET ligand development based on in vitro assays. The immunostain results reported by Dr. Koga and his colleagues show that DLB patients generally have lower absolute amounts of alpha sign claim pathology compared to MSA patients. It has also been shown that autoradiography using ligands with binding affinity to alpha sign claim, the signal intensity of autoradiography reflects the absolute amount of sign claim pathology. Based on these results, we conclude that MSA, DLB, PD, in that order, may have higher visualization hurdles. Recently, AC Immune Company announced that a Nobel PET ligand, AC125N9, can visualize MSA sign claim pathology in vivo. However, it remains unclear whether this ligand is also useful in PD and DLB. As another example, WC58, developed by Washington University, has been reported to show high binding affinity for sign claim fibril in in vitro evaluation. But unfortunately, this ligand is highly lipophilic and is presumed to be difficult to apply for in vivo evaluation. Also to date, uh, many attempts have been made to develop sign claim aggregation inhibitors. Some of these agents may have the potential to lead to serenostic imaging by radio labeling. Although much progress has been made in recent years, the de development of alpha sign claim PET ligand still ha hasn't been completed. 
our first generation tablet ligand, carbon-11 PBB3, has been shown to bind with moderate affinity to alpha synuclein lesions in the brains of patients with synuclenopathies, and we are developing alpha synuclein PET ligands with PBB3 as a lead compound. The most promising candidate, fluor 18 labeled C0505, has been shown to bind specifically to alpha synuclein in brain tissue from DLB patients with high affinity and to a uh, uh, degree corresponding to alpha synuclein lesion density in brain sections from MSA patients. In the mouse model of alpha synuclein fibril inoculation, the translocation of peripherally administered C0505 to the brain and visualization of alpha synuclein lesions were demonstrated by in vivo two photon microscopy imaging. In addition, Fluor 18 labeled C0505 visualized the accumulation and propagation of alpha synuclein aggregates in alpha synuclein fibril inoculation model mice and marmoset uh, by PET. Now we are planning to start its usefulness uh, verification in humans in uh, this year. Compared to uh, other modality uh, such as MRI and CT, conventional PET has low spatial resolution, and this is one of the factors that makes synchron PET difficult to uh, implement. We have developed a new helmet type PET system, which was launched in Japan last year by a company we collaborate with. By placing the scintillator close to the head, helmet PET has reduced development costs and improved spatial resolution. As an example, comparing FDG PET images of the same subject taken with helmet PET and conventional PET, it can be seen that uh, nucleus in the brain stem which were difficult to confirm in the past, can be identified. Uh, this is a uh, final slide and take home message. Uh, recent advances in tau pet and alpha synuclein pets were presented. Tau pet has already emerged as a practical technology and is becoming a fundamental technology in research and drug discovery settings. Although there are many issues to be overcome before practical synuclein PET technology can be realized, attempts are underway to develop promising ligands and to improve the, the performance of the PET system itself. Thank you for your attention.